dude, every time I hear that freaking song, I'm ready to go, bro. I'm like, ready to go, bro. Anyway, yo, let's welcome you to part three of um, Small Unit Tactics. Today's gonna be counter ambush skills, all right? This is some serious shit. Now, on the last part two that we did, got a little bit ahead of myself. I got a little bit excited about sharing with, uh, with you guys this really awesome maneuver, technique, tactic, but it's gonna be a little bit cooler, more cool guy information than last time. Last time, what we talked about, we're just gonna go over it real quick. We're moving in our tactical ranger file. Up front, we have contact. Bang, 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 bang. Fucking firecrackers and fucking fireflies from the bushes up there start lighting us up. We start hearing zzzz going over our head, right? We start, whatever, we're, anyway. We try to uh, go ahead and we try to, as best we can, we get online. All right, shoulder to shoulder. Overlapping sectors of fire, All right? We discussed that. We discussed that we want to prone out and start putting rounds back at the bad guys. Now, um, we also discussed the fire team rush. So these two, we got four guys on our fire team. Unfortunately, we're gonna divide up into two two-man teams, team one, team two. Team one's gonna start moving up, team two's gonna start moving up, and we're all sequentially gonna destroy the enemy with close combat. Once we get close enough to them, we can use whatever tools we have available to us if that's some serious type of shit, maybe we have grenades, maybe we have whatever, right? Or maybe we just have small arms and, and bayonets and knives or whatever, and pistols or whatever. But at some point, with the fire team rush, we're gonna be close enough that we're looking the motherfucker in the eye and you know the rest of the story. There is a slightly better way that we can do this, however. So it's gonna be a little bit more involved, but I have the distinct feeling that you're going to get the hang of this. So what we're going to do is nothing much changes at first. Contact. Contact front. 50 meters out in the bushes. Okay, 50 meters contact front out in the bushes. 50 meters contact front out in the bushes. We're all going to get online and prone the fuck out. Start putting rounds down at the bad guys. Only difference is we're going to still divide into two two-man teams. But this team is going to be our suppression team, team two. Team two is going to be our suppression team. Suppre, suppress, ion. All right, I'm like not a talented speller, but I don't even know if you guys can read that, but whatever. And then team one's gonna move up. They're gonna bound up just like last time, while team two with their overlapping sectors of fire is going to be putting lead down range. And I talked about how you want to conserve your ammo on the support element here. And um, bang, 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 bang. And this guy, bang, 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 bang. Slow down your rate of fire enough so you're not gonna burn through all your ammunition. These guys are gonna to get to a certain point now. It's important that you have um, a limit, right? Like a limit of fire. I'm blanking on the proper technical term for that, but um, you're gonna need to keep in mind that your guys are maneuvering up here, so you don't wanna swing your rifle too far over and shoot your own fucking guys. So I know sometimes they, like guys if, on a deliberate ambush, they'll put like a stake, especially at night, so that they literally can't jam the rifle over. But in this case, we might wanna just, you know, make sure that the rifle doesn't swing farther than our shoulder or something like that, right? So we, we just want to be cognizant that we have an element maneuvering here and we don't want to fucking shoot them. So don't shoot too far over here. These guys are going to continue to stay here and hopefully they're behind some kind of cover and they can um, suppress the enemy. If there's no cover available, there's none available. Just do the best you can. While these guys are up close enough, what they're going to do is they're going to flank around. Them, okay, so they're going to go from here and their objective is to get to the side of these mother flowers. Same thing if you're working with the analogy of a bar fight, right? So somebody swings at me, I'm swinging back at him. I don't want to just trade punches here. What do I want to do as a, as a trained or skilled, semi-skilled boxer? I want to angle off and fucking hit him in the side of the head there. Or in like a one-on-one -on -one boxing match, I throw a jab, I angle off, and then I throw that knockout right cross. Now we're gonna to try to deliver the knockout shot. We're gonna angle off and throw that figuratively, that right cross. So we're going to now come up here. 
these guys are continuing to put fire down here. These guys are going to try to outflank these guys and get the advantage and assault through. What's the problem that you might foresee here? We talked about blue on blue friendly fire. These guys, if this is all that happens, are gonna shoot their own guys once they get into what's called the kill zone, right? KZ, kill zone. So they need to let these guys know somehow that they're set and they're ready to move through the kill zone. Once they do that, once they, so these the guys are gonna to need to, let me back up here for a second. These guys are gonna let them know somehow, visually or audibly, that they want to advance into the kill zone and destroy the enemy force with close combat. So, what's the best way to do that? Well, again, I said visually or audibly or both. They could blow a whistle. Problem is we're in a gunfight. Um, there could be explosions. There could be, there definitely will be bang, 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 bang. There will definitely also be uh, what's called um, audio exclusion going on. Like you're getting fucking shot at, you're fighting for your life. So you're probably not gonna be listening and hearing a whole lot. Now, if we're a cool like operator guys and we all have radios with little headphones and the mic that comes off that makes you look like a fucking like ranger, then all right, awesome. Like we can tell these guys we're fucking ready to advance, shift fire. But probably, <laughs> probably you and I won't have access to that. And even if we do, why trust a radio? Because they always fucking go down at like the worst possible moment. So even if we do have a radio, the best way that I found that, that you want to signal is a smoke. So you have a certain color of smoke to designate this, this. And again, this is why we need to constantly train this stuff. If you're not working with your four or eight man fire team, um, you're wrong. You need to constantly be doing these drills. Otherwise, when the shit comes down and like you need to do this, you're not going to be able to do it. So unless you train this shit all the time, I'm just prefacing, unless you train this shit all the time, like it's not gonna go as well as it looks on a whiteboard and certainly not you know, as well as it looks in like a Garantham video. Cause I know he did one where it's very visual and he did a great job with this. The great job of explaining it, him and I forget the other guy's name, but watch that video, check out Garantham. I think it was the counter ambush video. Fucking awesome, it was just awesome the way they did it. I can't do that, I don't have enough guys to do that who know about this shit and I don't have like a drone and like a budget with editing like he does so I'm using a fucking whiteboard. Um, but you get the picture. So let's start over again. We're going here. Um, we're all online, interlocking sectors of fire. Team one's gonna start moving and maneuvering on this enemy. And our objective is to get to the side. Now our support elements continuing to suppress these enemies, keeping their head down and keeping them, you know, giving them something to think about while these guys maneuver around. And again, this is done quickly. It's done very, very quickly. Um, so these guys are gonna pop a smoke. All right, maybe they're gonna pop a smoke, they're gonna pop, let's just say a green smoke grenade, and they're gonna throw it over here so that these guys can fucking see it. As soon as these guys see that green smoke, they're gonna do something called shifting fire, shifting fire. So instead of now shooting directly into the enemy, they are going to start shooting to the side of the enemy. And again, they might actually literally have to turn a little bit and shift their fire over this way. They're doing that so that when these guys start assaulting through and bashing heads in with the butt of a rifle or sticking people with bayonets or pulling out their pit, whatever, you know, very close combat, very like unsavory stuff. While these guys are fighting up close like that, they aren't getting shot by their own guys as well. They only have to worry about the enemy's bullets. This does another thing as well. This also makes sure that if these enemies decide, oh shit, we want to flee now and get out of here because these guys are coming to kill us like for close combat. Well, they're going to run into a bunch of bullets here. Now, they could decide that they want to flee this way and just run away straight behind. And that's what they might do if they're smart. Um, okay, well, we can't do too much about that. But we can at least stop them from coming here. And we can also stop them, in a crude manner of speaking, from maneuvering on us here, right? They might decide, well, shit. Now these guys have outflanked us, why don't we move in and try to flank these guys, right? We might want to come and try to do this and come to their side. Well, this support element is going to stop them from doing that because they've shifted their fire over here and anybody they see that runs out here, they're going to aim for. 
So that's um, why shifting fire is important so that you don't shoot your own guys and so that these guys cannot maneuver on you. Now, they might do something like this. These guys know, oh shit, they've outmaneuvered us. <laughs> why don't we come in here and try to outmaneuver them? Um, it's possible if they're smart, maybe they'll do that. Yeah, you guys who have a lot more experience with this than me, who you guys who are rangers and all of this stuff, uh, you tell me what you think about that little maneuver, that if you were maneuvered on, how would you handle it? I might try to do that, you know, withdraw a little bit and maneuver around the maneuvering element. But anyway, let me know down in the comments about that. But suffice to say, this is probably the best way or one of the most doctrinally sound ways that we're going to want to do it is... Maneuver one side of our force to their flank, destroy them with close combat while these guys shift their fire, and hopefully we can take care of them like that. After this, these guys are gonna come up here. There might need to be what's called a limit of advance, an LOA. Um, so how do we know that we're not going to run into our own guys sector of fire once they've shifted their fire? We need to have a way of marking that. Now, Maybe these guys pop a smoke and throw it over to the LOA. Maybe we just kind of like can eyeball out the LOA ourselves. Um, in any case, maybe we're able to audibly communicate, you know, with this support element here, but we need to also have a way to kind of mark that limit of advance. And personally, I think from my personal experience with the mild systems and doing this stuff, it's you just kind of know, like, you get to a certain point and let's consolidate here. And again, these guys as well are gonna need to be in some kind of communication so that when they do run up here, they're again, not running into their own guys who are gonna be putting bullets down that way. So communication is gonna be key and they're gonna need to know not to go up past these guys' limit of advance as well. So the limit LOA is gonna look, I hope you guys can see this well enough believe you can but this uh square little corner of the field or the area of the AO here is going to be the LOA both teams aren't going to want to go kind of beyond that not at first now eventually will they want to sweep this area sure absolutely but we're going to consolidate here and what we're going to be doing is before we do fucking anything we're going to set up security so we've you know done away with all the bad guys Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We've done away with all the bad guys. Um, now we're gonna wanna search all the, you know, all the bodies. Maybe there's some wounded that are still alive. If we can, we're gonna take prisoners. If we're not able to, well, you know what happens then. Um, we're gonna definitely wanna search them for intelligence. We're gonna wanna like literally inspect their bodies and their pockets and their packs and whatever else they have on them to see if we can like figure out well, number one, how did they know we were coming here? What is their SOI? Like, what is their communication procedures? Like, all of that stuff. And maybe we, maybe it's in a foreign language. We don't understand it. But we're going to take it with us. Any documents we find, anything that we think could potentially be of intelligence value, we're going to fucking stuff it in our pockets, put it in our packs, and take it with us. And also, we're going to split that up amongst the team. So that if any of our guys, you know, from here on out get hurt or killed or injured or have, you know, left behind, uh, whatever... Uh, that way, not all the intelligence is in one person's pack or on one person's, you know, body. We want to split that intelligence up amongst our fire team as best as possible. But we're going to take all that intelligence before we can search any bodies or anything like that. We set up security. So um, we're going to probably set a guy over here. And we're probably going to set a guy over here. And just kind of cover the areas that we're not sure enemies might come from this direction upon us. Now we came from this direction, right? We were, we came up from here. So we're fairly confident, like unless the enemy is smart and they decide to move around this way, we're fairly confident that they, uh, they're they not gonna come from this way. And that's why we have a guy set up here on security. Security. So that hopefully he can at least alert us if, you know, this, this enemy force does come and try to outflank us. 
And this guy is here on the limit of advance. We haven't really cleared this area much, so he's gonna be up here, all sworn security. And uh, the rest of our team is gonna be searching bodies and trying to gather as much intelligence as we possibly can. Uh, we're also gonna be maybe taking prisoners, maybe we give medical aid to the enemy if we're able to, but you know, more than likely, we're just trying to search for intelligence. And so that's that. That's how to um, react to an ambush, encounter that ambush. That's one way of doing it. That's kind of the most popular way of doing it and uh, ties in nicely. And you guys should definitely go and check that Grant Thumb video out because it's a very well done video and it illustrates this point pretty much exactly. If you have any questions, comments, um, put them down obviously in the comments. And again, guys, all of my guys out there who have like done this stuff a lot and especially if you guys have done this stuff for real, like let me know in the comments, like critique me, please be respectful. Don't hurt my feelings too bad. But again, learn one, do one, teach one. That's why I'm doing this stuff. I've been doing it for a few years now, both at Tactical Response and One Shepherd. And um, it's time that I'm trying to teach it to learn it more better for myself. I'm not trying to appear no expert. It's never a commando, nothing like that. But I'm doing it for a while now and it's helping me in my head be able to teach this stuff so that at one point when I do become an instructor with One Shepherd, Lord willing, um, I will be able to um, make my words more better. <laughs> I would be able to teach this stuff better. So I figured I'd take advantage of having a YouTube channel and see if I could, you know, just do it like this as well. And share some of this knowledge and wisdom with you guys as well. Again, this stuff is all um, just for educational purposes only. Don't be a fucking idiot. Don't be an asshole. And until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Cheers, motherfuckers. <laughs>